Okay, this is the uh, notes for section 1-7 rewriting formulas. You should have already read this section uh, before starting to go through this video and take your notes on this. Um, what we're looking at here is um, taking formulas and solving them for any one of the variables within the formula. Every formula defines one variable in terms of the other variables. And by using equation solving properties or things that we've used in terms of solving equations in, in any, any algebra equation really, uh, you can manipulate a formula such that you can solve it for one of the variable in terms of the rest of the variables. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go through uh, a few examples of how we would go about doing that. So here's example one. It says uh, the period P of a pendulum is the time in seconds that it takes a pendulum to make one complete swing back and forth and is calculated by using the formula P equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G where L is the length of the pendulum in meters and G is the acceleration due to gravity which will always be 9.8 meters per second squared. So part A asks us to solve this for L. So basically what we want to do is get L by itself and we can only do that by undoing everything that's been done to L. Well if you look at what's being done to L we're dividing it by G, we're taking the square root of it and we're multiplying it by 2 pi. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the, that square root symbol kind of works as a, as a grouping symbol, so I'm going to get rid of the stuff outside of that grouping symbol by dividing both sides by 2 pi. Now if I do that, if I divide both sides by 2 pi, this is what I get, okay, p over 2 pi, these 2 pi's will cancel out, so I just have the square root of L over g is equal to p over 2 pi. Now to get L by itself, I need to get rid of the square root. So what I do is I square both sides. Well, when I square the left-hand side here, I have to square everything. So I get p squared, I get a 4, I get a pi squared. Okay, And then this just becomes L over g. Now, if I want to get L by itself, the only thing left is get, to get rid of this division. Well, if, I, if I'm going to get rid of dividing by g, I, I'm going to do the inverse operation, which is to multiply by g. So I'm going to multiply both sides by g. Well, g is like g over 1, so when I take p squared over 4 pi squared times g, that's like putting the g on top with p squared. So it would be p squared g over 4 pi squared is equal to l, and now we've solved it for l. We've done exactly what we wanted to do, and that was get l by itself. Okay. Part b says what is the the approximate length of the pendulum whose period is one minute. Well, if its period is one minute, remember P stands for um, the the length of time in seconds. Okay, therefore um, I can't put one in for P. I need to put sixty in for P. So I'm going to plug sixty in for P. We know that G we said was nine point eight meters per second squared. So I'm going to plug that in. And then I have over 4 pi squared. Remember, pi is a number, so when, when we go to calculate that, we're, we're going to use that pi key in our calculator. So if I plug this into my calculator, it gives me a number that is very close to 894 meters. Okay, example two here. Before we do that, let's talk about what, what it means for formulas to be equivalent. Um, Formulas are equivalent when the values of the variables that satisfy them are the same. So if you look at it, what we did in example one, it didn't matter if we had solved that for, for L or, or we had solved it for any one of those variables. If, if we solve it correctly, those are equivalent formulas. Okay? So if I look at number two here, we're going we're gonna to apply that same idea here as well. It says, because the density of air consumed by scuba divers increases as they dive deeper, they consume more air the deeper they dive. The formula T equals 30S over D plus 30 is used by some scuba divers to estimate the number of minutes T of air they will have at a depth D in seawater. If they consume a tank of air at the surface in S minutes, 
solve the formula for d in terms of t and s. Well, when we say in terms of t and s, that means that that t and s would be the independent variables for the dependent variable d. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo everything that was done to d. So if you look at d, we're adding 30 to it, and then we're taking that and dividing 30s by it. So we have a unique problem that we have the, the, the variable that we're looking for is on the bottom of the equation. So we have to do something about that. So I have to get this d off the bottom of this fraction. And the way that I do that is by multiplying both sides by this denominator. If I multiply both sides of this equation by d plus 30, what happens is on the, the right hand side, my d plus 30s cancel out. So I'm left with just 30s. And over here on the left hand side, I have d plus 30 times t is equal to 30s. So this is what we get right here after we've multiplied both sides by d plus 30. Okay? Now, once again, we, we want to focus on we're trying to figure out what d is. So that's what we're trying to get by itself. Well, there's no sense in distributing this t through to both of these using the distributive property because eventually I want to get rid of it anyway. So the best way to do that, since I'm multiplying t times this stuff, I can divide this whole side by t. Now, if I do that, I have to divide the other side by t as well. So these t's will cancel out, and I'm left with d plus 30 is equal to 30s over t. And now we're real close. We just got to get rid of this plus 30. And the way that we can do that is by subtracting 30 from both sides. And if I subtract 30 from both sides, I'll get what d is, which is 30s over t minus 30. <laughs>
base, each side of the base is 231 square meters. Therefore, the base must be a square. So when I look at B, the B is going to be equal to 231 squared. So now what I can do is I can plug those two things in to my calculator into the formula that we had before and solve for h. So if we go to our calculator and we plug that in, 147. Therefore, the height of that pyramid, h, would be equal to 147 meters.